Contract law. Discharge by frustration. A contract may be discharged by frustration. A contract may be frustrated where there is a change in circumstances, after the contract was made, which is not the fault of either of the parties, which renders the contract either impossible to perform or deprives the contract of its commercial purpose. Examples of frustrating events include the destruction of the subject matter. In Taylor v. Caldwell the contract for the hire of a concert hall was frustrated when the hall burnt down. Personal incapacity through illness, disease or injury will generally render the contract frustrated. In Condor v. Baron Knights the 16-year-old drummer for the Baron Knights was under contract to perform seven nights a week for five years. He suffered a mental breakdown and was told by his doctor he shouldn't perform more than four nights per week. He told the band and they dismissed him. He brought an action claiming wrongful dismissal. His claim failed, the contract was frustrated due to his ill health. Where the contract becomes illegal to perform it will frustrate the contract. In Fibrosa Spolka v Fairbairn an order in council made it an offence to trade with enemy territories during World War II. This frustrated the contract between an English company manufacturing a machine for a Polish company. If a contract specifies that performance must be in a particular way, where a later occurrence means it cannot be performed in the specified manner, the contract may be frustrated. In Nickel and Knight v Ashton, the parties specified that the cargo would be carried by the ship, the Orlando. The Orlando was damaged and had to undergo repairs when the contract was due to be performed. The contract was frustrated as they had specified the particular ship. A contract may also be frustrated where it is deprived of its commercial purpose. In Crowell v Henry the defendant hired a flat on Pall Mall for the sole purpose of viewing King Edward VII's coronation procession. The price agreed was £75 for two days. Due to illness of the king the coronation was cancelled. The contract was frustrated as cancellation of the procession deprived it of its commercial purpose. However, the contract must be deprived of the whole commercial purpose to amount to frustration. Hearn Bay Steamboat v Hutton also involved King Edward VII's cancelled coronation. The defendant hired out the claimant's steamship. The purpose of the contract was to take paying passengers to view the naval review which was part of the coronation celebrations. The defendants were also offering a day's cruise for the passengers. The naval review was cancelled. The contract was not frustrated. The contract had not been deprived of its sole commercial purpose as it was still possible to perform the day's cruise. A contract will not be frustrated where 1. It is more difficult or expensive to perform. 2. Impossibility of performance is the fault of either of the parties. 3. Where there is a force majeure clause. 4. Where the frustrating event could be foreseen. 1. A contract will not be frustrated merely because it becomes more difficult or expensive to perform. In Davis Contractors v Fairham, Davis Contractors agreed to build 78 houses for Fairham Council within eight months for an agreed price of £85,000. Due to a shortage in skilled labor and material the contract took 22 months to complete and was much more expensive than anticipated. The contract was not frustrated. It was still possible to perform the contract. The same principle was applied in Sakiroglu versus Nobly Thor when the Suez Canal was closed for shipping. It took four times as long and cost considerably more to carry the cargo via the Cape of Good Hope. The contract was not frustrated as it could still be transported by the contractually agreed date. 2. A contract will not be frustrated if the impossibility is the fault of either of the parties. This can be seen in Maritime National Fish v Ocean Trawlers. The claimant owned five fishing vessels one of which was chartered to the defendants. The fishing vessels were all fitted with otter trawler nets which required a license. The claimant applied for five licenses, but was only granted three which he applied to his own boats. The contract was not frustrated since the claimant had chosen not to fulfill his contractual obligation. 3. Where there exists a force majeure clause, this will apply rather than the law of frustration. Jackson v. The Union Marine Insurance established that the clause must actually cover the event which occurred. 4. Frustration will also not exist where the frustrating event should have been foreseen. 
In Walton Harvey v. Walker and Humphreys, the contract for advertising on the roof of the hotel was not frustrated by the compulsory purchase order. They knew the local authority were looking to purchase it when they entered the contract. In Peter Cassidy Seed v. Osuastukik Orpa, Ant's Eggs required an export license. After agreeing to the sale, the defendant was refused the license. The contract was not frustrated as he should have foreseen the possibility the license may be refused. Consequences of frustration. Where a contract is found to be frustrated, both parties are released from their obligations under the contract and neither party may sue for breach. The allocation of loss is decided by the Law Reform, Frustrated Contracts, Act 1943. Under Section 1, 2, all sums payable under the contract, cease to be payable and any money already paid may be recovered. Where expenses have been incurred this may be deducted from the amounts payable or paid. This is at the discretion of the court and is subject to what is just and equitable in the circumstances of the case. There is no provision allowing expenses to be recovered which exceed the amounts paid or payable. Section 1, 3, provides that where a valuable benefit has been conferred this must be paid for. In summary, a contract may become frustrated where there is a change in circumstances, which renders the contract impossible to perform, or deprives it of its commercial purpose. A contract will not be frustrated if it is still possible to perform, nor if the event should have been foreseen. If there is a force majeure clause or if the impossibility arose from the fault of either party, where a contract is frustrated, the parties are released from their contractual obligations. Neither party may sue for breach. Any money paid up front may be recovered. Any money payable ceases to be payable. Expenses may be deducted from this. If a valuable benefit has been conferred this must be paid for. This video is part of a series of videos on contract law from www.e-lawresources.co.uk. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel www.youtube.com slash at e-lawresources. It's free to do so and will help us to keep providing these videos. Check out our website which provides lecture outlines and case summaries. See also www.e-lorevision.org.uk for revision games and quizzes. Thanks for watching.